afternoon, everyone. I'm Jenna with Stalls TV, and welcome to creating eye-catching artwork with CADWorks Live. In today's class, we're going to be going over some popular and trendy looks that we're seeing in the industry, and we have a lot to fit into today's class, so let's head over to the screen and get started. For the first look, we're going to be creating a design for a pocket tee. Now, pocket tees have grown on us in the apparel decorating industry uh, with the amount of different looks that you can create with them. One popular trend that I'm seeing um, pop up here and there are the pocket pets. Uh, it may be something you've seen uh, just in like your local retail stores, but I wanted uh, to start off with something a little fun and out of the norm uh, for the first design. So what we have here um, is a little animal popping up out of a pocket. What you're seeing here is a pocket in a 4x4 four four design, which would essentially be the size of the pocket on the t-shirt that you're decorating. Now if you're decorating a blank um, piece of apparel that doesn't have a pocket, you can always put this on there for it and create it all just with using heat transfer material. But this right here is just on there so that you can see the dimensions of the pocket that you would be decorating. So we're gonna save this over here and I'm going to show you how to do each step in creating this um, from scratch. So my first uh, step is to bring in my artwork. What I'm gonna do here is just go to File, and import and vectorize. We wanna make sure that whenever we're importing a design we chose off of Google um, that we are gonna be vectorizing it so that it will read cut lines when you're sending it to the cutter. So you can see right here it's asking for us to choose our background colors. So we're just gonna click the background and a little box will show up with which color that you chose. Once you have your background color chosen, you can click Next, and then click all of the colors that you would want in the foreground or in the design that you want. So I want my um, brown here, the black, pink, and blue. So now that we have all of our foreground colors chosen, we can go ahead and click Next. And it's going to go ahead and, and start reading this as a vector cut file. Now you can see here that it added a little pink to the outer edges of our design, but that's okay. Uh, once we, we can go ahead and click OK here. Um, if you want to sharpen the edges, you can mess around with your region resolution. That's going to increase value and merge any smaller regions of the color into larger regions of color. Now our fit to curve here, it's going to increase the value and will smooth out any corners you're seeing that don't have really a sharp edge. I'm okay with what I have here, so I'm just going to click OK and wait for that to load. Got a large image here, so you can go ahead and start scrunching this down so it doesn't take so long to load. Okay. Now you can see we need to get rid of this uh, pink outer line that's around our image. So we're going to leave the box around here so that we've selected the piece that we want to edit. Now that we have our box around here, we can go ahead and move up to shaping. And we're going to break apart by colors. Once we break apart by color, we're going to select the pink. And we're going to break that apart by its regions. I'm doing this because I want uh, to be able to take out this, these outer edges without messing with any of the pink designs within the image, such, such as the nose. So we're just gonna pull these pieces out. To make it a little faster, I'm gonna hit Control and move to each piece that I want selected so that I can move it out of the area that I'm going to be working with. So I can go ahead and select all of those and right click and delete those so that I don't have to mess with those anymore. Now our typical uh, pocket size is four by four. Uh, I went ahead and imported a uh, pocket si um, piece of artwork just to oh, undo that. Sorry about that. 
So um, I went ahead and just imported um, the same pocket style as the t-shirt as the t-shirt that I'm looking to decorate. So I just imported this something from Google. Um, make sure you're looking for something free so you don't have to purchase something like this. If this isn't something you're really concerned about, you can just bring in a piece of clip clip art such as like a box and um, make it into a four by four also. I'm gonna go ahead and um, head up to my shaping area and condense all of uh, my colors together again just so when I go to move this I'm not moving one piece of color at a time. So I'm gonna shrink this down so that we are at within our four inches here. We'll do 3.75 Okay, so I'm going to take my pocket design here and I'm going to place it over top of this cat that I have here just so that you can, uh, just enough so that you see it popping up out of the pocket. This is essentially what you'll be seeing coming out um, on your t-shirt. So we're going to make sure that our pocket design here is put to the front and we're going to select that and the cat and go to shaping and do click this button here that's back minus front something didn't go right so we're going to try that again make sure everything's selected shaping back minus front so you can see here that it created a little line through my um, artwork here, my little piece of clip art. We want that to happen because we're gonna wanna break these images apart so that it is cutting off the part of this clip art here so that it's meeting the top of the pocket. So we can go ahead and select that and we're going to break apart by regions again. And we're just gonna select the bottom half and click delete. So this is creating the illusion that the cat is popping up outside of the pocket on top. And I just wanna remind you guys, if you have any questions, feel free to chat them in. Uh, I know that there's gonna be a lot of questions with this, so feel free to ask away. Do we have any questions so far, Karen? We do. When importing some designs, um, the vectorized final product shows blurred edges. What can you do to try um, to fix that if you've already tried vectorizing it several times? It may just be uh, the piece of artwork that you're trying to import in. If it wasn't something that had a clear enough image or the image wasn't large enough, it's going to show up blurred and you'll have to go with another piece of artwork. Unfortunately, with um, importing images from the internet you are going to have trouble with that unless you purchase them in an SVG file. Okay so now that you can see we have the pocket pet created it's always fun to try to uh, customize a little bit more as you guys know the grumpy cat is famous for uh, just being very negative about things. Um, I just went ahead and imported some text to customize the pocket a little more just to up the value of the piece of artwork we're creating. To do that, I went to add text and typed in no. And I also went and changed my font. Now CAD Works comes with a number of different styles of text that you can choose from. Uh, you can also import your own. I imported a ton from defont.com. They have a ton of free download, downloadable text that you can use. So that is what I went with and then I just chose one of the fonts that I have imported in there. And just to make sure everything's all centered, we can go ahead and hit align and center and that will center everything for us perfectly. Now, whenever you go to send this to your vinyl cutter, unless you're going to be creating your own pocket on your t-shirt, that is where you're going to wanna to keep this here. Now, if you are just going to cut it like this, you're gonna to wanna to remove this pocket just by right-clicking 
and deleting. And then you have your finalized artwork that you're going to print. Now that we have uh, our first finished design, uh, I want to keep in with the trend of pockets. And I wanted to show you a popular look with a basic blank hoodie that you can create in CAD works uh, that makes the pocket actually a part of your design. Uh, just to create a unique look as opposed to your basic um, hoodie and full front graphic. Uh, you may have seen this design in our fall fan wear guide under our resources page on Stalls TV. So I wanted to show you guys how to create this and this is the look we're going for. Just making the text look like it's behind the pocket um, and then it was just sewn over top. So I'm going to show you how to create this look from scratch. So we can go ahead and um, delete everything we have here. Actually, we'll move everything to the side here so that we have something to base it off of. So I'll move this over and shrink it down a little bit just to get it out of my way. Okay, so the first part I want to start with is the most difficult, and that is creating the football lettering that you're seeing here and making it look as if it is behind the pocket. And it's a very simple process. It's all about um, how you are bringing in your, uh, like it's all about how you're uh, measuring the width of your pocket and the height between the collar and the pocket to fit all of those graphics in. So we're gonna start by typing out football here and picking a font. I'm going to go with something a little basic that CADWorks already has in here. We'll go with this. Okay, so before the class started, I went ahead and measured out all of my um, measurements for the pocket and the width of the garment and everything. So I know ahead of time that bringing in the text, I know I can't go anything over 17 inch inches in width. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit since our design's going to get a little big here. And I'm going to move this to 17 inches in width. I want the design to look as if it's going to be going behind the pocket a little bit, so I'm going to drag it down a little bit more just to give it that effect that it's a really big, bold print and it's placed right behind that pocket. So, um, as I mentioned, I did all of my measurements beforehand, so I already know that the top of my pocket that's going to be going over these letters is 9 inches in width. So what I'm going to do is add a piece of clip art, and I'm going to go with just a horizontal line. And I'm going to change the color on this so I know that I am putting it in front of the letters as opposed to behind it. And I know that my width is nine inches here. Okay, so now that we have the correct measurements, I'm gonna go ahead and move this up to where I want it to be so that I know that I'm in the right area for where I want my pocket to be starting in the middle of the word. So I wanna make sure I'm completely centered, so I'm gonna go to a line and hit center. I'm going to drop that down just a little bit. Okay. All right, so now that we have our nine inches there across our 17 inches, we are going to select both of these together and we're going to go to shaping and we're going to do that back minus front again. And that's going to um, take apart the piece that I'm going to need to delete so that I can place this down without having to cut anything. So I'm going to break apart my regions here and I'm going to select the area that I need deleted. So that has everything set up for me to go ahead and place this word down over that pocket without having any um, 
adhering issues. So it's not going to go on top of the pocket or be in any um, contact with the seam. So we won't have any problem with that. Now that we have our uh, first part done, I'm gonna go ahead and condense all of this so I don't lose any of my pieces and I'm gonna move it over here. Now I want to import my hoodie and you can do that simply just, just by clicking import and you can save an image such as this t-shirt that I have here. You can save an, imp an image in and import it in just as simply by clicking those two simple buttons. So now that I have my hoodie already and I'm just going to bring it up. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so that we can see everything. Okay. So I can see that this is fitting just fine on there. And this is also a good way to show your customers that you're decorating for that this is um, what it's going to come out like. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the color here to gold and start by bringing in all of my other text. So it looks like we have a 2016 here. I'm just going to go to add text and type in my letters. Now I want my 2016 to look more spread out so that it's a big bold print. But instead of going in here and typing little spaces and things like that, instead of doing that to make it a little easier, you can just go to uh, character spacing right here and increase your spacing so that you have a larger, more spread out font. Okay, I wanna make this a little bit bigger. And change my color. Might as well change our font too while we're at it. We were going with the academic, so we'll bring that up. And I want this spaced out a little bit more since this is a thicker font. So I'm just going to keep upping this until I'm satisfied with the spacing in between each character. Do we have any questions, Karen? We do. Can you make text thicker or more bold even after you already choose a font? Yes, you can actually. And you can do that um, just by double clicking on what you want to be thicker and going to add effect. Um, and this will give you a number of different options that you can do to um, edit or make an effect on your text. So. If you wanted to um, make it a little bit bolder, you can add a small contour around that. If you decide that you want it to just be all the same color, you can go in and add that fill to make it the same color so that it does look bolder. Now you aren't going to be able to make these individual um, characters thinner unless you were to um, break it apart by its regions and scrunch, that, scrunch them down um, automatically, manually. So if you wanted it to be skinnier, you would just be scrunching it down manually each time. So I'm gonna go ahead and condense all of that together. And we're going to create our university high here. And we are just going to do that by adding text, just like how we did earlier. And picking our font. Now, as you can see, we have a bit of an arch over here. So we want to mimic that. We're going to add effect. And you can do um, a big arch, like with a circle text. You can do it with a circle text 
or you can do it with just this simple arch or this arch also. So we have some, a few different options. It just depends on the roundness or the size of the arch that you want. I'm gonna go with big arch. And if I wanted to arch a little bit more than that, I can go ahead and play with my height and width here. So I'm just gonna increase this a little bit. And my uh, letters are a little closer together than I want them to be, so I'm going to up my character spacing also. Now, if you know the exact number that you want, you don't have to sit there um, for a couple minutes or seconds with, by clicking the arrow. You can just go in and type in what you would want. So say we want 75. And then that will go ahead and break those apart for me a little bit better. Completing this is just as simple as dragging them to the size that you want them to be. Now, as you can see, um, if you mess with the arch a little bit more and the height and width of uh, the entire text there, it's going to give you more of an arched look. So as long as you're playing around with that a little bit and you're getting the exact look that you want, you know which buttons and everything to click so that you know. More questions? When you add the small contour, will it cut out the contour even if it's the same color as the font? It will, and I'm glad that you actually brought that up because I did want to touch on that. So if we're going to add um, that double color contour, that is going to show up as a cut, like it's going to read as an, an, an additional cut. So what we can do there uh, to get rid of that additional cut line is select this and go to shaping and click weld. Once you weld that, it's going to um, connect both of those um, two color contours and make it just one piece as a whole. Another question? Can you use CADWORKS Live with the Roland BN20? You can, uh, but I wouldn't, if you're going to um, take full color artwork and add um, cut files to it, something that I would recommend Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw for, uh, just because you're getting into more full color things as opposed to single or two color. Okay, so we have two completed designs so far, and that's just with pockets and how you can utilize them for unique designs. Um, so we just did a fan wear piece and I wanted to stick into the stick with the trend in that so we're going to go ahead and move on to um, fan wear pieces that you can use for more specific fan wear such as um, moms and dads or family members and we're going to go ahead and do that with this knockout design for a bulldog's mom here. Uh, this is something that's very popular and I'm seeing in a lot of fan wear and people who want customized t-shirts for their son or their granddaughter just to wear um, to the game and representing and supporting them. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in here so that we can begin learning this process. Um, now this is going to be a few steps. So I want you guys to pay, pay close attention to this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring in our text. So here we have Bulldogs mom and we need to select it select a text for uh, knockout designs you want your text to be a little more bold or thick for this because you want the image that you're putting inside the letters to really stand out so I'm gonna go ahead with Acklin here and I'm gonna go ahead and break this apart also Okay, so we'll bring mom down here and make it the size, same size as bulldogs because we want an even um, text here so that our design is showing up nice and bold in the center. I'm going to move that up there. 
going to go ahead and condense these so that when we move everything to the center, not each piece moves individually, but just the word. Okay, so now that we have everything condensed, we can go ahead and make sure everything is lined up perfectly. So we're going to do center there so we know our bulldogs and our mom are matching up just right. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to move this up here and I'm going to duplicate this by hitting control D. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color because these two are going to be um, very compatible in this whole process. They're going to need to work together so that we can get this punch out that we're seeing here with the football. So I'm going to move this down here and uh, bring in my football. Now you can bring in clip arts from all of the clip art that CADWorks already offers for you. And by typing in football, you can see all of the different options that you have here. They have a really nice helmet, some different um, footballs, but these are a little too detailed for me. Uh, they're not something that I want right in the center of this text because it's just too much detail. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in my own artwork there. Just going to import and vectorize this. As you can see, this pretty much already came vectorized, so I don't have to be do too much work here. Just click the foreground color and everything will be all set up for me. Okay. I'm scrunch this down. What's nice about um, having large files like that is you know you're going to be getting a nice clean cut. So if you're ever pulling images off the internet, you want to make sure that it's a, a large file so that you will have a nice clean cut in there. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and center this. Move it a little bit so you can tell it's a football. And I want to make sure that this part's centered too. So again, we're going to go to align and center just to make sure it's right in the middle. Okay, now we're going to be knocking this football out of the bulldog's mom here. So we're going to select both of these and we're going to scroll up to shaping and go to back minus front. I made a mistake on my part. So before you do that, you want to make sure that these are all one item because it's not going to be able to read that there's two here and it's just going to do one or the other. So we need to condense, we need to condense Bulldog's mom here so that it's reading as the same thing. We'll bring this to the front by right clicking and bringing to front. Make sure we're centered here again. Okay. So we're going to go to shaping once again and do our back minus front button. And I did it backwards. Okay. So now that can happen if CADWorks is not reading that this is the image in the background. So just to double check that, I'm going to right click this, make sure it's set as to front, and make sure this is set as to back. Let's do this again. Make sure everything's centered. and back minus front. Okay, so we finally have our punched out football here. Now you can see whenever I begin to move this up to, to the top, you'll be able to see that those black letters are popping through and creating the image of the football. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that these are completely on top of each other because we're going to go and do this back minus front process again. So I'm going to make sure that this is completely condensed together. 
so it's not reading one thing at a time. I'm just going to set this directly underneath that, highlight it all, and go to Align and Center Middle. So that's going to make sure that that is directly on top of each other. I'm going to move this to the back because we want to make sure that the red is reading on front. Okay. To back. There we go. Okay. So now that we have uh, this directly on top of one another, we can go ahead and select these again. And we're going to do the back minus front process again. Make sure everything is set up right. Select all. There we go. So you can see that it punched out just the area of the football and we're just left with these two pieces so that there's no layering involved. So we can go ahead and center that all up. Okay, so now that we have our colors here, we can go ahead and uh, play with the different types of colors we have. So I went with black and yellow over here but you have a tremendous amount of options with CAD Works Live. And the majority of these are very compatible with Stahl's heat transfer material. Um, so you have plenty of options to pick from. So we'll do blue and gold for this one. We can go ahead and delete our football over here. And I just went ahead just to customize it a little bit more, make it more personable for this Bulldog's mom we're decorating this t-shirt for. And I just added in a number in there. And chose a quick font for this. Go ahead and erase that additional space there. And do our contrast color there. And that is how you create your knockout design. Do we have any questions on that? I know it was a pretty long process. Is there any way to use registration marks to align the two pieces when heat pressing them? I'm not sure I understand the question um, with the registration marks. I know what's easiest for um, applying two colors is by doing a quick tack so that we don't have any shrinking or anything whenever we're um, heat pressing these down. So with our glitter flake or fashion film or whatever it may be, as long as it is a hot peel material, you're able to do um, a two second tack. And that means that you can place your first layer down first for two seconds so that it won't shrink or anything. And then we can go ahead and inlay our um, football design in there for the full application instruction. So it'd be two seconds, then a full 15, and it'll apply all of these without any um, shrinkage, which would have a huge effect on registration. Another question? How could you get more space in the cutout? If you want more space in between um, your two letters, what you would do, I'm going to go ahead and import that football again so I can show you how to create um, a line around it so you have a better inlay. So while that's updating, what we're going to do is uh, bring this in, shrink it down to size, and double click on this and you're just going to go ahead and add that same contour effect that I showed you earlier. So if you add a small contour, it's going to create, um, you can't really see it with this uh, checkered here, but it created a little line around this football that's going to create um, a gap space for you that makes it easier for inlaying your artwork. 
So, and you can make that line thicker by going with offset and you can make it thinner also. Okay. Okay, so now that we have our finished knockout design, we're going to move to a different theme, and that is decorating for small businesses. I went ahead uh, with a dance school for this particular design, um, and as you can see here for this particular design, you can see that I went ahead and added the glitter texture in here, and that was one key thing I wanted you guys to take away from this is, how to add this texture so that you're, if you're showing this to your customers before uh, you, you give them, you want to present it to them, this is how it's going to look. Uh, so I just, as simple as bringing in text and um, creating this whole look, all I did was um, go to my text and I went to fill. And that's where you're going to find your texture and you can import a bunch of different um, layouts and things that will fill your text, that you can fill your text with. I went ahead with the gold glitter that I chose here. I'm gonna uh, go with the blue just so you can see the type of effect that it has. Now, as I mentioned in the last um, design, that you can add a little contour so that your image is inlaying uh, so as most of you know, you cannot layer over top of glitter flake. So being able to add a contour to this, and I think this will uh, show a little bit better than the football did since we have more of an intricate design here. So you can see that it created a gray outline there. So if we want to make that thicker just to make sure our registration's not off, we can up our offset on there and it'll create more of a gap so that our inlay isn't so difficult. We're going to go with, click OK, we're going to move back to our white screen here just so you can see better what I'm doing. And we'll start the rest of this from scratch. So we're going to add our text. We have Whitman and I just chose one of the fonts that I got off of, defont.com. Click OK. So we have our text there. And I'm going to just go ahead and duplicate that and put company as my next line. Okay. Also, as a side note, I got this uh, dancer artwork here from our sister company, Great Dane Graphics. They have a number of different uh, artwork that you can use that is already vectorized. You can just import right in here. So that's where I got this. Remove this up. Okay. So as you can see here, we have our dancers that are going over top, going behind our C right now. I want to bring that to the front, and since we already added our contour line around that, we're going to select these two together, the dancers and the company, and we're going to do that back minus front again. And that's going to go ahead and take, well, Make sure it's definitely to the front, and this is to the back. Taking a little while to load here. Just click undo here until we get back to where we need to be since I made a mistake on that part. Okay, so we're back where we need to be. Click to front and to back. I'm gonna select these two pieces. Do our back minus front button.
and that will create the little gap there for her leg to lay over. Now, since that is there, we're going to double click on this and remove our contour. And I'm gonna zoom in here so that you can see that it created a registration mark there so that it will be a lot easier for layering over top. So we'll zoom in. So you can see the gap between her leg and the part of the C. Any questions so far? What is the name of the font that you're using for Whitman and Company? Okay, so it is Park Lane NF, and this is off of DeFont. So if you go to DeFont.com, they'll have a free download for you. You just type in Park Lane and it'll come right up for you. Okay, so I'm going to add in my dance text. And I want this part to be a little girly, so I'm going to go up to my fonts here and find something curly. Okay. And I'm just going to increase the size of my text here by dragging it out. Okay, so I want to make Whitman and company here um, to have a glitter flake effect. So I'm going to hit control and select both of these at once and I'm going to condense these together so that I can edit them all at once. So we're going to double click our Whitman and company and go to fill and texture. Once we go to our texture, you can go ahead and import all of your glitter flake colors. You can see I have blue and gold here. Somewhere in the midst of all these crazy designs I have in here, um, there's a whole glitter flake layout. So I'm gonna go ahead with my gold. And you can also change your background color. So if this was gonna go on a black shirt, you can change that to black, make sure My dance is in white. If you wanted to change your dancers over here to another color, maybe you want it to be more of a magenta or a fuchsia, we can go ahead and make that brighter also. And then you have your completed design for your dance company. Karen, do we have any more questions on this piece? Okay. going to move on to our next design. I wanted to um, reach another school market and that would be, or another market and that is school sports um, and just creating a very easy design but also very detailed. Uh, we're having um, a lot of different things here but very easy to cut and to create. Uh, I'm also getting all of my artwork from Great Dane Graphics, as I mentioned, and I just wanted to say that you can also uh, bring in all of your, let me change my background here. You can bring in all of your artwork and save it into your clip art so that you don't have to go and import it every single time. So I'm going to move this over here and recreate this. Okay, so we're going to go to our Great Dane graphics over here that I saved. We're going to bring up our volleyball. And we are going to also bring in a clip art from CADWorks. And I want a banner in this, so I'm going to see what options we have here. Here's the banner I want. Select that and I'm just gonna drag it across this volleyball, large enough so that I can fit some text in there. And we're going to do our front minus back process again. So we're gonna make sure this is set to front and this is set to back. Select both of these. Okay. 
and now that is punched through so that when we're layering this we won't have any issue with putting this over top of glitter flake. Okay, so I want to change the color of this banner to a silver. So I'm going to do that and bring in my lady, ladies falcon text just by going to my text here. and dropping that right in there. Now I want this to fit the size of the banner a little more just so it's a little bigger and a little bolder in the whole design. Okay, now I want to add in and customize a little bit uh, more by adding volleyball. So same process just by adding text and choosing a font. And go with the stylish calligraphy here that I also got from defont.com and sizing it up with the design. Okay, so I want to add a little bit of a contour uh, on this, same as I showed you before, just so it's easier registration for you. And I don't want my offset to be that thick, so I'm going to drop it down a little bit. Same process with this. We're going to select volleyball. Make sure it's to the front. Make sure this volleyball is to the back. We're going to select these two designs and front minus back again, or back minus front again. can go ahead and delete my contour or remove my effect here from my text. And everything is all set up for that to lay right in there. Now I want to uh, customize the year of the Lady Falcons volleyball team. So same process just by adding text and putting our numbers in there. And I want to go with an athletic look just to make it a little more sporty. I'm going to adjust my character spacing here and I want it to round the top of the ball so I'm going to do my circle text with this. Go back to our text, space it out just a little bit more and place it right over top of our volleyball here. Okay, so I also want to match these up with the color of the banner and import um, some additional customization uh, with the stars. I'm going to go with the circle stars and just break them apart by their region. Uh, this will make it a lot easier for me placing it around this ball so I don't have to place them completely individually. So let's break apart our regions there. And I want to select these six. So I'm going to move them over here and widen them out so they fit alongside of the ball here. Move them out a little bit. And there we have our completed design. So just by adding in our um, effects, you can see that I added in the glitter flake just by filling it in with our texture. And you can do that with Lady Falcons, you can do that with the stars. There's really, the possibility is endless with CADWORKS Live and the amount of things that you can do with it. 
just going to change my background here just so you can get the full effect of the entire piece. Now that is all we have time for today. I wanted to go ahead and let you know a little more about our artwork. Um, Great Dane Graphics is going to be doing two more classes tomorrow at 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Uh, that is going to be our digital printing art. Uh, 11 o'clock is with Dane and 2 o'clock is with Joe. Um, and another exciting thing I want to let you guys know about, uh, we are hosting a contest uh, through Great Dane Graphics. Uh, you can um, win a free yearly subscription uh, for thousands of vector artwork. So some of the artwork you are seeing in here you can get off of that. Um, and if you want to read more about this and how to uh, sign up, you can go to our Facebook page and learn how to enter to win. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope I was able to um, help you get outside of your box and creating artwork with CADWorks Live. Thanks so much.